Hey everybody, welcome back to a late show. Let's let's go to my favorite part of the evening and saying hello to our friend Mr. John Baptiste. <laughs> I mean, it's a dance craze, John. I oh, mean, yes. it's gonna explode on TikTok. <laughs> what are we gonna call it? What are we calling it? What, what uh, is it? The, the Baptiste? I don't know. You started it. I was just trying to copy you. Yeah. John Baptiste, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow, man. Yes, indeed. Lay it on. Joining me tonight is the former California Attorney General and presidential candidate who currently serves as only the second black female senator in U.S. history. Please welcome back to A Late Show, Senator Kamala Harris. Senator, thank you so much for being here. It's great to be with you again. It's, it's really good to see you again. But before we get started, we just learned right before this interview that the officer, Officer Rolf, who shot Rayshard Brooks in Atlanta has been charged uh, with homicide. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, do you, have you looked at any of the charges and, and what is the significance of this? Well, one, one significance of it is that the district attorney there clearly from the first moments of the incident and, and the tragedy took it seriously. He started an investigation and, and I think um, swiftly um, addressed the issue. And so now it's just now they, they go to trial and they'll proceed to trial. And um, these are difficult cases, but I have confidence in the ability of that prosecutor to, to seek justice and to achieve justice. It seems like a, a simple thing to have happen, uh, especially since there's video evidence. But um, I think it shows there's a kind of a low bar that the police departments and uh, district attorneys have to get over in order to address some of the issues of the protesters in the streets. If, if, if someone shoots an unarmed man, black or white, that person should face consequences. It, it, so, Part of what I'm fighting for right here in DC right now is that we have a package of bills that we've named the Justice and Policing Act. Uh, my partner in this on the Senate side is Senator Cory Booker from New Jersey. Um, we are members of the Congressional Black Caucus, which is, is leading it on the House side with uh, Congresswoman Karen Bass. One of the components of the Justice and Policing Act is exactly your point, Stephen. It's about the fact that when these cases go to court on the issue of excessive force, in most jurisdictions right now, the question that is asked is, was that use of force reasonable? Well, as you and I know, you can reason away just about anything. What we are pushing for is instead that there would be a more just and fair question, which is to ask, was that use of force necessary? So changing the standard to actually meet the point, which is that when we are looking at these cases around the country, there have been cases that have been charged and brought, but the bar is so high, it's almost insurmountable, which means that the communities and the families of these victims do not see justice. And so that is part of what we need to do to, to really restructure the way we are handling these cases. Uh, and I, I know that uh, we had we had Senator Booker on, and, and I know that uh -huh. the two of you are working on this legislation yeah. and introducing it into the Senate. McConnell mm -hmm. has announced uh, Tim Scott's Justice mm -hmm. Act uh, that will go to the floor. Will you uh, vote to advance that to debate? And if not, what's it missing for you? Well, so I, I think that Senator Scott is well-intentioned, but frankly, the, what, what has been proposed just has no teeth. We need accountability and consequence. It's an interesting thing, Stephen. When we talk about the criminal justice system, we will often use the phrase consequence and accountability as it relates to someone who is arrested, but rarely as it relates to the system itself and those people working within the system. And what the people who are the, by the thousands in 50 states of America marching for is that there be equal justice under law as we promise as an ideal, a founding ideal of our country. We're not doing that right now. And part of the reason we're not doing that is we are not holding police officers who break the rules and break the law. We are not holding them accountable and there's not serious consequence. And so our bill does that. What I've seen in terms of what was offered today on the Republican side, it talks about training. Well, we've been training folks. It talks about a number of things that are not about serious consequence and accountability for bad behaviors. 
Um, President Trump issued an executive order um, yesterday, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, was there anything meaningful in there from what you saw? I, no, it's window dressing, but then that's usually what we get out of President Trump. Uh, no. And again, the point here is that people are demanding change. Listen, there is, frankly, the sad reality of it is that when we look at what happened in the murder of George Floyd, when we look at Breonna Taylor, when we look at these cases that have repeatedly happened in our country, that just most recently, but in the context of just go back just only 30 years, I'm not gonna even require you to go back to Emmett Till, go back to Rodney King. These are not new grievances, but they have gone unaddressed because the system is flawed in that it has not held bad actors accountable for bad acts. And that's what we are pushing for. We are saying no knock warrants, that there should be no ability to have no knock warrants for drug cases. Breonna Taylor would be alive today if there had been a ban on no knock warrants and drug cases. That's part of what my bill offers. My bill, together with, again, the, those that are our partners in this, is saying that we need to have independent investigations. I know as a former prosecutor, the DA, the state's attorney who works every day with that police department, should not be in the business of then investigating and prosecuting a police officer from the police department they work with every day. And I'm going to tell you why. No matter how well-intentioned that DA may be, there will still be the appearance of conflict. And in our system of justice, we must achieve actual justice and also the appearance of justice. And that means let's have independent investigations. I talked about a national standard for use of force. Let's also have practice and, and pattern and practice investigations. When I was Attorney General of California, I investigated law enforcement agencies that were alleged to have a pattern and practice of discrimination. That should be happening in the United States Department of Justice. No thanks to Bill Barr and Donald Trump. They it, it virtually been ended under this administration, but we need to renew those investigations and also give them the subpoena power to investigate police departments, even if they don't want to be investigated. Um, because you were the Attorney General of California mm -hmm. for, I believe, six years? Yes, that's right. Okay, sometimes called the state's top cop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you got some criticism from your Democratic colleagues uh, for some of the actions you took as Attorney General, but does it also give you the ability to explain to the police and to those who may not understand what defund the police means? Because some people may understand demilitarize the police or reform the police or restructure. When you hear defund, can you explain that away in a way that doesn't uh, scare some people? Well, so first I just wanna say that I have seen in my career as a prosecutor um, that police and leaders in law enforcement come to the table and join with a movement that is about creating greater trust of the system and in the system and of law enforcement. When I was Attorney General of California, we put in place the first in the nation for a state implicit bias and procedural justice mandatory training for police officers. And that was because law enforcement leaders came together with community leaders and said, we need to acknowledge the fact that all of us carry implied bias, but when you have a badge and a gun and you carry that, it could lead to lethal consequences. So I have seen in my career how we can create an environment where people come together and acknowledge the truth, no matter how difficult that may be, and deal with it. To your point on this issue of, of you know, there's a hashtag defund the police. I've, I've never really tried to, to put anything that I think about in the context of a hashtag. But I will say this, we do need to reimagine how we're doing public safety. For too long, the status quo thinking has been to suggest that by putting more police officers on the street, you will have more safety. That's just wrong. When you look at it, the reality is that upper middle class suburbs do not have that kind of police presence. But what they do have, well-funded schools. What they do have, high rates of home ownership. What they do have, families that have meaningful jobs with salaries that allow them to get through the end of the month without worrying about whether they can feed their children. What they do have are small businesses that have access to capital. What they do have are, are access to health care and mental health care, and it is affordable. So when we talk about how are we going to achieve safety, which should be our collective goal, let's understand healthy communities are safe communities. 
So when in the many cities in America, one third of their entire city budget is dedicated to policing, we really have to have an honest conversation about whether that is the smartest use of the resources. And by no means does this mean for me, by no means does this mean getting rid of police, but it does mean taking a critical look at whether we're actually being smart with taxpayer dollars if the goal is truly safety. Because if it is, invest in schools, invest in healthcare, invest in jobs, and you'll have safe communities. Folks, we have to take a quick commercial break, but when we return, I'll have more with Senator Kamala Harris.